Okay, so here is a animated path between points on a map done in Blender. And this was inspired by a tutorial done a few years back um, with an older version of Blender. So this one is a little bit more updated. Um, and it's divided into three main topics. Uh, there's many steps, but these are the three main ones that I don't want to forget, which I surely will. So uh, we'll I'll go through the three topics here. First one being animated path between the points. Um, first comes first, setting up the project. Uh, let's create a general project, get rid of this cube, uh, and then importing this image, which I got from Wiki Commons somewhere. Link is um, on the web page. So uh, this is going to have to be imported as image is plain which is an add-on itself. Um, and then for some reason, it takes a while to, to come in. Uh, and then you change the viewport shading so you can see the map itself. The map for me is not in the optimal position, so it's gonna have to be rotated 90 degrees backwards on the Y axis, uh, step one. Uh, and then the numpad seven will get to the view that which I want to, but this thing is still not in the correct position for me at the rotate once more minus 90 degrees in the uh, along the Z axis here so it's going to be a rotate and then minus 90 in the Z axis there we go now we're going to scale it up a little bit make that sucker bigger there we go so uh, now the setup's finished. Um, what is the first thing we are going to do? We are going to add a something. We're going to add a circle here. Um, so this circle actually is going to be one of our destination points. And we'll just rename it to point one. And, oh yes, we have to give it a nice color here. We're going to give it a nice red color. And as you can see, even though it has this nice red color, it still remains the same the way it is. First of all, this thing might not even be visible in terms of the z-axis. So I pulled it up a little bit. Still, this thing uh, is not showing up red. Uh, I am going to have to fill it in. Here, you have to just... Select the entire thing, edit mode, press F, and then the entire thing fills in with the red color. Uh, so um, then we go back into object mode and scale this thing down to the point size I want, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Okay, I guess we'll leave it at that. And then we can move this thing around, um, middle of France will do. Now we're gonna make a copy of this thing and just paste it back in here. Now we have our second point. We'll call this point two. And we'll take the second point and we'll put it somewhere to the east here, east, northeast. That's our second point. So we we'll go from point one to point two. Now that we got our two points, we want a nice path and that is under curve path. Here we go. So this is going to serve as the path between the points, this object here. Um, here we go. Now, the most important thing to keep in mind here is I'm going to stretch this thing, tilt it, move it, uh, all that stuff, but not in object mode, but in edit mode. And there is a reason for that is because we're going to align it with another object and it goes haywire if this, not, if this is not done in edit mode. So we're gonna rotate this thing and then we're gonna scale this guy to make it fit nicely between these two points here. Okay, a little bit of tilting, a little bit of moving, a little bit of X, a little bit of Y. 
Looks like it needs to be tilted a tiny bit. Looking good. So we stretch it a tiny, 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 tiny bit more. Maybe. Do we need to be so picky? Well, why not? Almost there. I know we're being picky. Let's leave it there. I think it's okay. Um, so there's the path. Looking nice, huh? It's a little bit underneath. But it's nice and straight right now. Now watch this. I'm going to pick the points in edit mode. And as you can see, uh, these points are kind of something like the tangents uh, along this curved line here. Now, by editing these, these, these singular points in edit mode, uh, by default, you get these five points here. Uh, I have this black line is the actual path um, uh, that's that's created. It's a nice curved path. Yeah, we want to get these these two these dots were a little bit too high up. There we go. Yeah, it looks nice. Okay, so now we have a nice black curved path here. This is the path that's going to go from point one to point two. Um, okay. So far, so good. Uh, that's the path. The path actually is going to, uh, in the animation, it's not even going to be present. It's just going to be a guide. The actual object that's going to go along the uh, path is going to be um, this mess object. It's going to be a plane. See this big plane that I just added here? Um, that, believe it or not, is one of the, the points that goes from point A to point B. So... Uh, same thing, we'll give it a nice red material. Uh, uh, the difference here is um, it shows up right away as red. Uh, for some reason, the circle uh, needs special attention. Uh, but this one, give it a material, uh, color, and boom, it's, it's, it's already has this red color. You don't see it here because it's below the, the map. If I pull it up a little bit, you'll see it. Um, OK, but we're not going to touch it because, ah, yeah. Um, so I've scaled it down uh, in edit mode. Very important. Um, because as I said, this is going to be one of the points. So this is, it has to be much smaller. Uh, and now we're going to do, we're going to add two modifiers to it. First one is the array. And as you can see, by default, you get two. And you see now the, the it looks like a rectangle instead of a square. That's because there's two of them. We're going to, put a spacing in between them by making the offset 1.5. And that's why you see now two squares. Um, and then the second modifier, you have two in total. You're going to have the follow path modifier. And look, boom, it clicks right into place. You see these two things now are right along the curve. I added from 2 to 20 now. Look at this thing. It's starting to take shape already. Um, and now the right number, uh, I put 28. I think one less will be the right number. Uh, let's just double check. Uh, so we'll go from 28 to 27. Boom. There's the path. Looking nice. Um, now, the animation. Uh, this thing actually uh, is not animated yet. Um, but we're going to set that up. Now the, we start the first point at 1, now at 80. Ah, yeah. Uh, and now we'll put 28 here. Insert keyframe. Look at that. So I set the array numbers with a keyframe. First one, and then 27 at the end. And along the timeline, you see that 
uh, now the animation is complete. So it looks good. It goes right along the curve. So it's just these two uh, modifiers. Um, second part. So now these points here, uh, one nice effect would be is to animate this point here. Um, instead of staying red the whole time, uh, I'm going to make it fade in uh, as the path starts to approach uh, the point. And to do to that, I opened up, uh, up up above. There is the shading uh, button up there, which is now pressed. And then I am going to add under the shader thing two things: a mix shader. And now I'm going to reset it as here, put the mix shader right between on uh, left-hand side shader and then right-hand side shader to surface. One more I'm going to add, which is the transparent, BSDF, whatever that stands for. Um, and then here is, this is what makes this thing disappear. That's the two things you need. And here, now with this thing here, you can kind of control um, of this thing is transparent uh, or completely opaque. Um, but it still has to be animated. And also there's a couple settings here has to be set. So blend mode, we're gonna go to alpha hashed. And that's important if you have many objects. Um, shadow mode, none. And now look, you can see this thing appearing and disappearing, but it's not animated yet. That's the thing. And there's an important little thingy machiki here. Uh, first of all, into the animation pane, we are going to choose the shader editor. Exactly. And now here, so, We want to have this thing completely transparent at the start. So we set a keyframe at this point. Insert keyframe. Now here we want to keep it also completely transparent, right up keyframe here. At the end we want to completely opaque. Here set it to zero, and then set a keyframe. Boom. Now at the very end, it fades in. So it stays transparent, then boom, it fades in. That's kind of nice. So that's how you do uh, the fading in and out of a destination point. Last thing is the tracking camera. Um, okay, so this animation looks good. Uh, from a general perspective. Um, the camera perspective is the zero number pad key. If I press it here, as you can see, um, it just has one view, um, which is kind of static. It'd be kind of nice to have a camera that's dynamically following the point. That's what we're going to do now. So what we'll do is we're going to add an empty sphere. And this empty sphere is going to um, serve as the, the tracking point. We're going to just sit it, set it on top of the, the path itself. Uh, we add a constraint and another follow path and set it to follow. Now you can see, boom, this sphere that we set up is now all of a sudden at the beginning of the path. And then they click this animated path thing, which is also important. Now, as you can see, it look, woo, it's following the path. And oh, now it's key, it doesn't stop. Can we make it stop at the end point here? Wouldn't that be kind of nice? There is somewhere a setting, uh, and it's under here for some reason, boom, clamp under path animation clamp here. There, I can make this thing stop under the path itself, under path animation, under clamp. Yavol.
Okay, second part. Um, we're going to add the path for the camera itself. And so this is another path. It's going to be a little bit higher up in the air. And we're going to put the camera to slide along this path here. So I'm going to get a little kind of like uh, roughly the same size as, as the, the, the the path between the points. I'm going to tilt it in the same orientation, make it around the same length. There we go. And we have to raise it in the sky a little bit here. There we go. OK. So this is going to be our camera tracking thing, or uh, the camera track, put it that way. Oh, yeah, same thing here. Make sure uh, this also with the fool around with in edit mode, uh, not in object mode. So the camera, we're now clearing the, the it was had coordinates. We had to clear uh, the location and also the rotation, which I just did. Um, and now I'm going to add a constraint to the camera. Um, follow the path, which is along this new path. And uh, go up there to target and um, just press the target, you numbskull. There we go. And that's one constraint. Now we have the, the camera on the path. We have another one. We need to make sure that the camera is pointing at the sphere. So this is track two. And we want to go to empty here, which and now it's pointing right at empty here. Um, now, if I move this uh, sphere, you can see the camera now is pointing to this sphere the entire time. It's maybe not so easy to see because um, whatever angle you're at here, but uh, it's actually working correctly. And um, we just have to make sure that the camera follows along the path. So it's the same story here. Um, I need to go to uh, go to the path. Here we go. And animate it. And now, looking nice. Now if I go to zero, the camera path, watch this. Looking nice. Okay, that's about it.